Hello everyone. So now let us uh, continue with our discussion. In the previous class, we were discussing about the module 2 that is environmental friendly and uh, the cost effective technologies in which the first topic was learned that is the different substitutes for wall construction. In that we studied in detail about the bonds in the masonry that means the varieties of materials used for the construction of walls in which it creates different varieties of bonds in the wall construction. So we learnt about the Stetcher bond, header bond, English bond and Flemish bond and in Flemish bond we learnt about the two different types of Flemish bond that is single Flemish bond and double Flemish bond and later we learnt about one more new topic that is one more new type of a bond that is rat trap bond. Now in this session let us learn about two other different substitutes for wall construction that is cavity walls and arches. First let us take up the concept or the different substitute that is arch for our discussion. So arch is not at all a new word. We have been using the word arch in our daily regular basis. Arch is a well known word which has been learned in our regular daily basis. So, now in this session let us learn about the definition of an arch, elements of an arch and we are even in urge to learn about the different types of an arch. Okay. Now, first of all what do you mean by an arch? Nothing but a wedge shaped unit which are glued together by using a mortar and they are usually provided at the openings and this are usually provided in order to carry the weight of the wall above it and also the superimposed load that falls on this particular arch. So this is the basic definition of an arch which is an opening which is formed by a wedge shaped unit which is glued together with the help of a mortar which is primarily used to carry the weight from the walls. Now to learn about the elements of an arch, you have various elements in an arch in which we have to learn each one in detail. Now in this particular figure, so arch is What is extra door? An extra door is an external curve of an arch. Intra door is an inner curve and extra door is an outer curve of an arch. The next one is the soffit. So what is soffit? Soffit is nothing but the inner surface of an arch. So basically this intra dose and soffit can be defined as the same. Okay. The next one is the visors. So in this particular figure what do you mean by visors? So visors are the wedge shaped units which are used to form an arch. These individual wedge shaped units together when they are glued together with the help of a mortar we call it as an arch thereby that individual unit is nothing but the visors. 
okay next so the next one is the crown it is the highest part of the extra dose if you observe in the figure the crown is the highest part of an arch which is which, which shows the highest part of an extra dose that is the outer curve of an arch next one is the key key is nothing but a wedge shaped visor which is provided at the crown we call it as a key spandrel spandrel are the triangle portions formed between the extra dose if you observe in the figure spandrel is the triangular portion formed between extra dose and horizontal line drawn from the key okay this is nothing but the spandrel the next element which we will be learning is about the abutment so what do you mean by abutment here abutment abutment is the end support of an arch abutment is the end support of an arch next comes pier so pier is the intermediate support of an arch especially the intermediate support of an arcade so what is arcade arcade is the rows of an arch we call it as arcade the next one is cubat the inclined surface on the abutment in order to carry the arch is nothing but cubat the next element is springing line nothing but the imaginary line which is drawn or which is considered in between the springers what are springers so the next one is springer springer is the first visor of an arch and usually it is placed adjacent to the cubat the springer is the first visor of an arch which is placed adjacent to the skew back and the last one is what called as the haunch so haunch is the half portion of an arch in between the crown and the skew back so in between skew back and the crown that half portion of an arch we call it as haunch so the haunch is the lower half portion of an arch in between the crown and the skew back okay this we call it as a haunch so these are some of the elements of an arch which we need to consider so usually arches are made of many kind of materials it can be made of stones it can be made of any kind of metals or made of bricks etc so depending upon the requirement we consider different types of arch which we will be learning one by one in detail along with the figure now let us take up so as i have discussed there are various types of arches let us study one by one in detail so let us study the first type of an arch flat arch so if you observe the figure as the figure shows this type of an arch is flat in nature and it is the weakest type of an arch and is commonly used in the building of 
light weight constructions so in this case so as we have discussed about an arch we have intra dose and extra dose in this case of an arch the intra dose of this kind of an arch is usually flat and is at a 60 degrees horizontal angle and the intra dose in this case functions as the base of an equilateral triangle so in this type of an arch the extra dose are straight and flat so usually this kind of an arches are usually employed for light weight and spans of up to 11 inches okay this is the first type of an arch which is the flat arch next so as you see this this is the second type of an arch and it is called as the horseshoe arch so this type of an arch is named of because of its shape that is the shape of a horseshoe so depending upon or because of its form which resembles a horseshoe and curves more than a semicircle so this kind of an arch is most commonly used for an architectural purposes the third type of an arch is called as the pointed shaped arch so this pointed shaped arches are also known as gothic arches so in this case two arcs of the circle meet at the tip of the pointed shaped arch forming a triangle the triangle components might be either isosceles nor equilateral this is about the pointed shaped arch the next type of an arch is about the relieving arch so as the figure resemble the primary goal of this relieving arch is to provide more support to the structure the concrete elements should be sufficiently absorbed into the end point of this arch so when it comes to the relieving arch we may quickly repair the deteriorated wooden lintels without harming the arch or the structure's integrity so this kind of an arch is usually used when we are required to offer extra strength to the structure so these type of an arches are usually built on wooden lintels or a top of flat arch you may easily replace a decaying wood lintel with these arches without affecting the structure's stability okay this is about the relieving arch so the next type of an arch is the segmental arch a segmented arch is one so this is a circular arc that is less than 180 degree the segmental arch is one of the most durable type of arches which is capable of withstanding significant force or thrust on it so the segmental arch was initially created by romans however this type of an arch was usually considered in the building of residential windows and doors okay this is about the segmental arch next type of an arch is the semi circular arch in this case the force or thrust is carried to the supports in a vertical direction in this form of an arch which resembles a semi circle so as the figure resembles it is almost in the shape of a semi circle this usually occurs because the skew back in this kind of an arch is usually horizontal it is exactly on the springing line so the semi circular arch also known as the roman arch creates a half circle and is termed as a roman arch as it is a common element of all types of a roman architecture next comes venetian arch so as the figure represents so it has a three centered it is it is a three centered arch so the other name given to venetian arch is a three centered arch so this 
is also known as Queen Anne Arch. It is also known as Queen Anne Arch and it is one of the classic style with poor structural foundation. So these types of ornamental arches are usually supported by the architectural pillars or posts at the intersection of horizontal and semicircular portions. Okay, this is about the Venetian arch. So these are some of the type of arches which we normally come across and which are most regularly used. Okay, so this is one of the major substitute for wall construction that is arch. So after arches, let us learn about the next type of construction or after arches, let us learn about the next type of a substitute for wall construction which is called as cavity walls. So since this considered substitute for wall construction is cavity walls, we need to know the difference between this wall with our regular solid walls. It can be the brick wall or the wall which is made of stones. Here we are thinking or we are concentrating on the cavity walls because of its one of the major advantage in its construction. So, first of all, cavity walls are nothing but the two leaves or two skinned walls which have a hollow space in between or the hollow cavity in between. So these kind of walls we call it as cavity walls. That means when the double walls are constructed with a small hollow gap in between these two walls are nothing but cavity walls. Usually these cavity walls are usually provided or usually constructed for exterior walls. So when we think of the hollow space in between these two walls, the two walls are nothing but the exterior wall and the interior wall. So when we consider these two walls, what do you think the thickness of the interior and the exterior wall will be? So the interior and the exterior wall may be of same thickness or the interior wall may be having higher or greater thickness when compared to the outer wall. Okay, this is with respect to the thickness of the wall. So when we compare the thickness of the hollow space in between these two walls, so usually this hollow space or hollow gap in between these two walls may not exceed about 100 mm. But the gap which is created in between these two walls will be the same for the entire length of the wall. Okay, this is these are some of the points which is to be considered. So, after knowing about the basic construction of cavity wall, what all are the necessities of constructing these walls? So, basically cavity walls are usually constructed in order to offer greater resistance to the penetration of rainwater from the outer wall to the inner wall. So, that is the major requirement of cavity wall. So, so the major requirement of this cavity wall is to avoid the entry or penetration of rainwater from the outer wall to the inner wall. So, we know that in this case we have two walls that is to be constructed. However, the mason materials required for the construction of these two walls may be of same kind or may be different. But here one thing we have to concentrate that means the space in between. The cavity walls may have the hollow space left as such or in some cases these hollow space are even filled up with an insulation that is cavity insulation or a cavity filler. Okay, so this is the two different types of cavity walls that means the hollow space is left hollow as such 
and the hollow space are filled with an insulating material. Even though cavity walls may require more time for its construction, but when you consider the resistance offered by these walls for heat absorption and the water absorption gives a greater advantage when compared with our regular solid walls. That means it is highly resistant to heat as well as the water of penetration when compared to the solid blocks. So these are some of the highlighted or important points of cavity walls. So after knowing about the cavity walls, it is its brief discussion. Now let us see its figure. Now as the figure shows, you have a cavity walls in which you have two different figures in which first figure represents the cavity wall without an insulating material that means the hollow space is not insulated and it consists of both inner wall and outer wall. In the next figure the same cavity wall with an inner wall and the external wall but the internal space is filled with the insulation or the cavity insulation. After knowing about the cavity walls and types of cavity walls with the hollow space in between and the insulating filler in between, we need to discuss about the advantages of cavity walls. If a material has some advantage, we have to also think about its disadvantages also. So what all are the major advantages of cavity walls? The first and the foremost advantage which we consider here is damp prevention. As discussed earlier, cavity walls are primarily used in order to prevent the entry of rainwater from outside, from the outer wall to inner wall. It has high resistance to the water absorption. Thereby, this cavity wall proves to be highly damp resistant when compared to our solid bricks, when compared to the solid walls of same thickness. Next, heat insulation. So, as we know that air is very poor conductor of heat, so since the hollow space is provided in between these two walls, the heat which is absorbed by the outer wall may not directly penetrate through the inner wall which get reduced in its heat once it is passes from outside wall to the inner wall, thereby it offers high resistance to heat absorption. Thereby we can say cavity wall is highly heat insulated when compared to our regular solid blocks, our regular solid walls. Next, sound insulation. As we all know that the sound waves moves faster in solid material when compared with the air. Thereby, since the outer wall and the inner wall have some air in between, these sound waves once it penetrates from the outer wall, it has the obstruction to its movement thereby it offers high resistance to the absorption of sound thereby creating a layer which reduces the sound waves from, from penetrating from the outer wall to the inner wall thereby we can say cavity walls are highly sound insulated when compared to the solid walls. And the last one is its economical status. So when we think of the cost of construction, we can say that 
the overall cost of construction of cavity walls is about 20% less than our regular conventional wall construction. Since the layer in between is not filled by any material, that quantity of materials required for that hollow space is reduced thereby overall construction cost can be reduced here. These are some of the important advantages of cavity walls. So, along with its advantages, it also have some disadvantages. The first and the foremost disadvantage here is its design and workmanship. Since the construction of this kind of walls is not as a regular conventional uh, wall, here it requires it requires high standards of design and construction to provide a sound wall. It needs standard design and workmanship for the construction of this kind of a wall. And during its construction also, it requires regular workmanship and regular maintenance of this kind of walls is very much necessary since an hollow space is left in between these two walls. And when it comes with the da vertical damping material which is provided, so the vertical damping material is to be provided at regular intervals. And uh, nextly, when we consider the thickness of the wall, when we compare the cost of this cavity wall with one brick thick wall, obviously the construction of this wall is slightly costlier because we get larger thickness. So thereby, the construction cost may be considered slightly more than the regular uh, conventional walls. But the overall construction cost is reduced because of the hollow space. But when we consider thickness aspect, so when we compare this wall with one brick thick wall only, then we can say the construction cost is more. So these are some of the disadvantages of cavity walls. Now, we shall see the cavity walls at various situations through this figure. That means the cavity walls, how the cavity walls avoids the penetration of water from outside to the inner walls through this figure. Let us take up the first figure. So, if you observe this figure, which has the outside wall and the inside wall with a 50 mm cavity in between. Here the outer wall is made of a brick, lay, brick material and the inner wall is made of a cement blocks. Now this shows the two walls in between which there is a 50 mm space which is nothing but the cavity. Now this figure shows the front sectional elevation in which the same brickwork, same outer wall and the inner wall in between which you are provided with the cavity. Here one thing we need to keep it in mind that cavity walls are usually provided to keep the rain out and not to keep the house warm. Okay. Now, when it comes with the next figure, so if you observe this figure, the outer wall is subjected to the rain splashing. So, this rain splashing is seen in the outer wall, thereby this outer wall needs to provide a protection through the cavities to the inner walls. Now, if you observe this continued figure, so in this figure, once the rain splashes, splashes, some rain gets through the outer leaf, but it trickles down inside the cavity. See, the water which gets splashed on the outer wall gets trickles down inside the cavities and flows out through the cavities itself, thereby preventing its entry inside the inner wall. This is what we are trying to get in the cavity walls.
okay i think you people are able to understand the water which is splashed on the outer walls it gets trickles down inside the cavities and flows out through the cavities in the next figure if you observe you have two different layers in between which you are represented by a red line a red horizontal line with a small vertical line in the form of a t so this figure shows that as we are considering the cavity walls with the hollow space in between we need to consider that this walls obviously are not as strong as the solid wall because of the hollow space in between which is filled with the solid material in case of a solid wall so in order to enhance the strength of this cavity walls we are provided with the ties we are provided with the ties which are also called as cavity ties and these ties are usually provided in the alternate courses in order to strengthen this cavity walls okay now if you observe in this particular figure you are provided with a small vertical line at the bottom that is the small vertical line in the form of a t that red small vertical line this is usually provided in order to stop the rain from crossing the outer wall to the inner wall okay now in the right side in the last in the edge you are provided with the stainless steel cavity ties if you observe so those are the cavity ties which are usually provided which are tied on both inner wall as well as the outer wall okay the next figure here shows the representation of the ties that is the cavity ties but they are placed one at the substructure and the other at the superstructure so what is the substructure and superstructure the structure below the ground level we call it as substructure and above the ground level we usually call it as a superstructure there in the figure we are provided or it is represented as floor that is the flooring which is provided okay so these cavity ties are provided at the substructure and the superstructure done now if you observe the next figure so this is the most important one if you observe here clearly this this outer wall and the inner wall which is provided with the cavity ties at the superstructure level and the substructure level along with this if you observe there is a dotted line in between they are nothing but the damp proof cores that is dpc so usually this damp proofing is usually provided in order to avoid the penetration of water from one layer to the other layer so this damp proofing may be either sheet plastic or lead or modified bitumen felt etc they can be made of either of any of this kind of material so they are nothing but damp proof cores so these are provided in between the wall construction vertically so in order to prevent the water to penetrate from the lower level to the higher level so usually if you observe the positioning of this damp proof cores usually they are placed at a height of about 150 mm from the ground level so this is the minimum height where the damp proofing is provided and at the uh, edge you can see the representation of the outer wall and the inner wall with the provision of this dpc that is damp proofing now after that if you observe in this figure you are able to find the damp proofing cores 
which is made of either sheet plastic, lead or modified bitumen felt. Along with that, if you observe the dotted lines, so this DPC, which is at a height of 150 mm from the ground level, they are even placed in between the filling and the flooring. So if you observe, in between the floor and the filling, you may observe this damp proofing membrane that is DPC. That means this DPC is laid even on the walls as well as in between the filling and the flooring in order to prevent the water absorption from the ground to the flooring and above the structure. This is what is represented in this figure. So even in this figure you can observe the cavity ties which are provided at the bottom and on the top, right? So this is the overall picture of a cavity wall with a cavity ties with a damp proofing concrete and uh, the differentiation the, and the differences and the differentiation between the substructure and superstructure everything. But in this case the hollow space is not filled by any insulating material. The hollow space is left hollow that means cavity is left hollow. Fine. So this is about the cavity walls with major elements. So finally, in this figure, you can see the representation of cavity walls. So here you have three different pictures. The first one is with the outer wall and the inner wall with the hollow space in between the hollow space in between along with the cavity ties. So this is the hollow cavity wall without an insulating material. The same cavity walls with an insulating material is what showed in the next figure, in the second figure that is filling the cavity with the insulation. That means the insulation is provided in between. So in this figure itself, you can see the splashing up of water. I think people are able to see the splashing up of water in this particular figure. The splashing up of water from the interior wall or the splashing up of water from the exterior wall to the interior wall passing through an insulating material is what shown in this figure part in this figure B. Next, the third figure is what the outer wall and the inner wall along with the cavity ties with the hollow space in between but in this case the insulation is usually provided after the inner wall. Insulation is usually provided next to the inner wall. So the difference between the second and the third figure is the positioning of the insulating material. The second figure, the insulating material is placed in between the outer wall and the inner wall whereas in the third figure, the insulating material is placed in between, is placed next to the inner wall, okay. So this is about the complete picture of the cavity walls. We were able to learn about the arches, the definition of an arch, the elements of an arch, the types of an arch and cavity walls. What are the advantages and disadvantages of cavity walls and some pictorial representation of cavity walls that how best it can offer resistance to the water, resistance to the rain water from penetrating inside the walls. So in our next session, we will be learning about the ferro cement and ferro concrete construction. So here it completes the different substitutes for wall construction wherein we have learnt about the bonds, the arches and the cavity walls. Okay?
in the next class we will be learning about the ferro cement and ferro concrete construction and precast elements okay thank you